Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. This week we are building on the success of our bumblebee hive installation and installing a honeybee hive. Let's get started. In all honesty, I am not the apiarist of the family. That is Mr. Pumpkin Becky's job. Honeybees are definitely more work than a bumblebee hive is, or red mason bees are. You need to manage them. You need to make sure they're getting enough food. If the weather's too cold, are they still being able to go out and forage, or do you need to supplement them? We've had three attempts at honeybees over the years, and each have failed for various reasons. With some it was the dreadful summer that we had and the bees just couldn't forage. Uh, with another one, the wasps were so abundant that they just completely overwhelmed our bee colony. We've always gone for the buckfast bee because that's supposed to be generally a gentler bee, calmer. In a small garden environment, you don't want something that's a bit wah. But we've come to the conclusion that maybe the buckfast bees are too nice and we actually need something with a bit of fight to keep the invading wasps at bay. There's two ways of buying honeybees. You can either buy a package, which is quite literally a box with bees flying around in it. And there's also a queen and she is usually inside a little cell just to keep her safe and it's usually clipped onto the side and you just transport the whole box and then when you're ready you put the queen into your hive and you upend your package into your hive or onto a slope and the bees will climb up the slope follow the queen inside and they are led by pheromones so they they know that their queen is what they need to follow what we've gone for today is called a nucleus and that's five frames with a foundation, with some feed stores, there will be larvae, worker bees, all, all the other sorts of bees and the queen all happily working away on it and that's usually come out of a thriving two, three year old hive. If you want to start beekeeping, you can look up the British Beekeeping Association on the internet. They can put you in touch quite easily with your local group and they will know and understand the conditions that you're trying to work with. And they'll be able to suggest the right sort of bees, the right sort of hive, all of that good stuff. And they can come and help you install your bees, extract honey, whatever it is you need to do. So as I said, there are different sorts of hives available. We started off with our top bar hive. It's a wonderfully simple, natural way for bees to live, but unfortunately, we think that they were probably having to do too much work to get themselves set up and we're leaving themselves a bit weak and vulnerable to predators. You can also get the WBC hive, which is that kind of quintessential English country cottage hive. Pretty little pitched roof, you know the sort. We've gone for a simple national hive, which is the sort of thing commercial beekeepers use. It's based on square layers filled with frames that the bees fill up and as you need to expand the colony you simply add another layer of frames on top and pop the roof back on and they will expand up into it.
Today's first job then was to get up bright and early and go and pick up our nucleus of bees from the supplier. We had about a half hour drive. The nucleus that they've come in is made of a corrugated plastic. So it's really tough. Uh, there was no chance of anybody escaping and there were no hitchhikers on the outside, which we have had before. We had got blankets in the car with us that we could have just thrown over had we needed to. But today there were no problems at all. We also had the bee suit in the car, but as we've only got one bee suit. Just like with the bumblebees, bee suppliers will be very aware of weather conditions and wanting to make sure that they let bees go on good days. Now unfortunately today the weather just went completely bonkers and we've had intermittent rainstorms and I almost thought it was hailing earlier. <laughs> It's been really bonkers. As soon as we got home, we brought the bees out into the garden and we popped them on top of the base layer of the National Hive so that the entrance of the nuke box is at about the level that the hive entrance will be at <laughs> once the bees are installed. And then we took off the plug cap and the bees began to fly straight out. I ended up having one land on my hand and I nearly panicked, but I didn't and I just let it sit there. It's just gone five and although dusk is quite a long way off today because it's been so cloudy and a bit chilly I think the bees will probably try and head home quite early today. Once they are back we will introduce the frames into the hive properly and then tomorrow they'll be flying as normal as, as they mean to go on. So here you can see our National Hive in two sections. You've got the base and sitting on top of it at the moment is the nuke box and we will empty the frames out of there and put them into the hive itself. And here is the top section which we will sit on top obviously because it's a top section and as the season goes on you can add more boxes to the top. On top you can see we have placed a feeder unit just in case the bees need some help
it's 20 past seven and we've just finished installing the nuke of bees into their hive. As you can see, it's just got one layer and then it's got a roof on it. In a couple of weeks time, what we'll do is add the next layer on top, but there's a queen excluder. That was the brown layer you saw go in and that stops the queen being able to go up into the combs that are in the next levels up which means she can't lay eggs into them, which means that's what we would harvest for honey. The bees we've gone for this time are Carniolan, and they are meant to be a bit feistier than the Buckfast bees. We finished installing them into their hive now, and the rest of them are starting to come back from their foraging. At this point in time, we've probably got somewhere around 5,000 bees in that box that sounds scary doesn't it but actually right now they're really docile and i'm quite confident sitting here and i've had some land on me and just stay calm and they're fine they get themselves ready and then they take off again the queen can lay something like 2,000 eggs a day basically her own body weight in eggs every single day once you get into peak production and the colony can go from 5,000 up to 50, 60,000 bees. <laughs> That's also a lot of bees. But you don't see them all at once. They aren't a big, swarmy, stormy mass. You've got drones, you've got workers, they're tending the brood, they're tending the queen. So actually, the number of bees you see flying past to and from the hive are not that many. It's not that scary once they're settled. After summer, the colony will start to drop down and you will notice that they'll start throwing dead bees out of the nest, if there are any. And numbers will probably come down to something like 10,000 in the main hive. So we'll come back in a couple of weeks and add those new frames. You saw that we put some empty frames in already. That gives them something to build onto. What the bees are looking for is space to expand. All the time the colony has space to expand, it feels happy. The reason you tend to get swarms is because the bees have become overcrowded in their colony and there's no room for them to continue to grow. So the queen takes off and she will take a good portion of her colony with her. If there's a princess who has been mated and she's come back, that's fine because likelihood is your colony will just continue. Or you can requeen by buying a new queen and adding her into your hive. Right, well that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.